Welcome to HB Kids. And happy Father's Day. You know, it's Father's Day, so I brought my father with me. And I call him Pop, Papa, Dad. Yeah, you could call him Pop too, or Mr. Lyco. Hey Pop, yes. we're in a series this summer called Focus. Focus. Focus, getting a closer look. That's right, and our life app is Faith. Trusting in what you can't see because of what you can Thanks. see. Let's hear a message from our friend, Mr. Bruce. Hi friends, I know I'm not Mr. Bruce, but I have the message he wanted to send. It's about our memory verse challenge. So here's the thing. Thank you for everyone who tuned in to our Zoom circles and you guys voted. So if I get 20, at least 20 videos of our memory verse, which is Hebrews 11.1, 1, then I accept your challenge. And the challenge is, for me to dress in a T-Rex costume and run like 20 yards or so while getting hit by water balloons. So, that is the challenge. Let's see, I don't know if I'll get 20 videos in, then I'll do it. This is my faith. This is my focus, all of my days I know where my hope is, I live it loud I shout the chorus, because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on loving I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I fix my eyes on you question for you okay and a question for our friends at home too all right okay have you ever like made up your mind about someone and you're like nope this person's scary I just know they are 
And then once you finally got to know them, then you're like, I was so wrong. Like, yeah. they're really cool people, right? Yes, I have. Yeah, that's Tapping true. you? Yes, it has. You know, this one time, there was, uh, when I used to serve with the youth, uh -huh. there was this mom who I was, like, terrified about. Yeah, like, she was, like, <laughs> she was scary, okay? okay? And there was even this one time where I had this conversation with her, and she was, like, right, she was like this. Like, oh, talking to me, except she was scary. taller. She was taller than me, so she was like... Oh. And I'm like, ah, right? And then I'm like, it's true. She is, she is scary. She is mean, right? Uh -huh. But then once I got to know her throughout the years, yes, uh -huh. she's one of the sweetest ladies ever. Oh, very yeah. nice, very good. So very like good. my my thought of her totally changed. Uh huh. Okay. But what helped too is that I had other people who were talking to me and saying, you know, she's actually a really nice person. And so I had to take what they said and said, all right, Lord, show me how, how she really is. And <laughs> God showed me. All right, praise God. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing to be scared of a situation, but uh -huh. being scared of a person can be a little trickier. That's right, that's right. It can right? Be. Like, how, how do you respond in a situation like this? Like, what do you do? Should we, like, run? Um, that's, that's a good option. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Do we face the person? Um, figuring this out is difficult. Yes, it is. What, what do you think we should do? Where should we go? Well, I think we should go to the Word of God and find out what the Word says about it, of how we are to, you know, to handle the situation. Yeah, okay? totally. I love it. See, Pop, we've been in the book of Acts, right? Yes. And we're talking, we're actually going to pick up where we were last week. Okay. So there's a man by the name of Saul. Saul. So oh. I need you to help me do a recap. Okay. 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 So a man by the name of Saul. Saul is from Jerusalem. Damascus. Where is he from? Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem. Saul is from Jerusalem. And he, okay. Did Saul like the Christians? No, he did not. He did not like them at all. No. What did he want to do to the Christians? Oh, he wanted to kill them. Yeah. So Saul was like really mad at them and wanted to kill them because he believed that the Christians were, were spreading the wrong message about God. And so he thought that by killing Christians um, was actually a way that he was helping God. Right, that's true. He which, thought he was. Which to us makes absolutely no sense. So he now is on his way from Jerusalem to Damascus. And while he's at Damascus, his whole point, do you know why he was going to Damascus? To kill Christians. Yeah. So he's going to Damascus to be even, you know, worse of a person and kill Christians and everything. And then he's on the road to Damascus. What happens? A big bright light shone That's from the sky. Yeah. And so he's like on his like horse or donkey or something. And then the light comes and he's like, ah! He gets knocked off his horse. Yeah. And then a voice from heaven, which we know is the voice of who? That's right. Our Lord Jesus. Yeah. And so he says like, Paul, or not Paul, Saul, why are you opposing me? He's like, why are you against me? Right. And then what happens to Saul? He became blind because of the bright light that shone down from heaven. Yeah. Have you ever looked straight at the sun or like straight at like a light flash? Yes, I have. Yeah. And yes. then there's that moment where you're like, I see spots. And then you try to like <laughs> catch him. And I try to walk around him. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't go so well. So he's blind for how many days? Three days. Three days. Okay, so while he's blind, he's being taken to the house of a guy named Judas. Mm -hmm. Not right. Judas. Iscariot, no. Right, no. but a different guy named Judas. Right. And a lot of people had the same names, you know? So there you go. <laughs> so Judas and this bright light. And then while he's there, there's this man named Ananias yes, uh -huh. and God visits him. Let's take a look at, at what happens. So I'll right. read it. Okay. Acts chapter nine, verse 10 says, in Damascus, there was a believer named Ananias. The Lord called out to him in a vision. Ananias, he said, yes, Lord, he answered. 
Yeah. I like that. Yes. Because it's like when when God called him, yes. he answered. Like he wasn't like, Psh, not home, don't talk to me. Like he right. said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I like that, Pop. Right, That's amen. Cool. All right, verse 11. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. So, Saul now, Ananias, follower of Jesus, he has a vision from the Lord. Right, right. And then, let's see what happens, right? Yeah. This is pretty crazy. So, verse 12, um, in a vision, Saul has seen a man come and place his hands on him, right. and that man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. So, Saul, what happened? Saul has a vision. Yes, right. So, want to recap that? A vision of what? We had He had a vision of a, of a man coming over, and he also had the name, Ananias, yeah. to come over to, to the place where he was staring at and having it, this man lay his hands on his eyes, and then after removing his hands from his eyes, he was able to see. Yeah. But after he was able to see, after that, he was also filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey, getting ahead. Let's let's keep going, Father. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. So okay. Jesus tells Ananias that Saul is expecting him. Mm -hmm. I like that. So right. there's like there two sides to this. Their stories overlap. Uh -huh. You know, because like God sets both of them up. Mm -hmm. So Ananias gets the vision right. about you know, there's a man named Saul, and this is what he saw, you know? And, right. <laughs> and then Saul gets this vision of like, this guy, you need to see him. Right. Because there's a reason. Let's take a look at verse 13. Lord Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. The chief priests have given him authority to do this. So. Saul's reputation from Jerusalem right. has traveled all the way to Damascus. Damascus. So this is what's like crazy. See, Ananias already had a judgment on Saul. Right, he did. What did he think about him? Did he like him? No, he did not like him at all. He was <laughs> actually scared to go see him. Absolutely, because Ananias knew, wait a minute, Saul is here to uh, take Christians captive, bring them back to Jerusalem, and probably right. kill them. I follow Jesus, uh, what does this look like for me? So Saul's reputation goes before him, and then uh, Jesus, you know, later on, like he, he talks to Ananias and he says, you know, Saul is actually going to be the one I'm gonna use to mm -hmm. tell right. the good news about me, not only to the Jews, so the Jews, um, you know, the, the Jewish people, but also to the Gentiles. Right. And what is a Gentile? A Gentile is a non-Jewish person. Yeah, so like you and me. Right, like us. <laughs> we're, we're not Jewish. And like you, maybe. Maybe okay. like you too, maybe, yeah. yeah. So, so to basically to everybody. Um, and then Ananias is asked to do a pretty big thing. So, Pop, we're going to play a game. Oh. I have four questions for you. Okay. If you get all four of these questions right throughout the rest of this lesson, I will buy you lunch. Oh, okay. Yeah? All okay, right. here we go. All right. All right. So the right. question is... Help me out. Keep praying. <laughs> what did they do next? So we want to know, Ananias has asked a pretty big question. So what did he do next? Here we go. All right. After the Lord told Ananias to go find Saul, did Ananias A, turn up the music really loud and pretend he hadn't heard the Lord speaking, B, Pack up quickly, move far away from Damascus and change his name to Clarence or C. Do what the Lord said and go to the house where Saul was. C. Nancy? Yes, it is. Final answer? Yes, final All answer. All right, he says it's C. Let's take a look at verse 17. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. That's right. All right, Pop. All right. I you got, one, you got one. One down. One. one. Okay. So, actually, 
What did he do next? Let's go to question number two. Okay, so Ananias placed his hands on Saul and A, told him all the terrible things he had done and called him a bunch of names that I cannot repeat here. Oh, wow. I know. <laughs> B, did he put him in a sleeper hold? Oh my. Um, that he learned while watching professional wrestling. Because they had TVs at that time. Or C, retold the story of what had happened on the road and prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What do you think? The answer is C. Final answer? Yes, final answer. All right, let's see what, let's see what happened. All right, the end of verse 17, he placed his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road and mm -hmm. you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Right away, something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes and he could see again. That's right. That's he right. got up and was baptized. And after eating some food, he got his strength back. Amen. Wow. That is so cool. Yes, it is. I love that. Oh, praise the Lord. I love that. All right, Pop, you're two. You got, you got two down. Okay. You got okay. two down. You got, got two more. I got two more to go. Two more to go. Keep so, praying, guys. Keep praying. <laughs> so what did Saul do while he was in Damascus? Like, what was his plan? His first plan was to capture all the Christians, take them to Jerusalem, kill them all. Right. Okay. Um, but then Jesus got a hold of his heart. The Holy Spirit changed his heart. Yes. And here's what's so cool is that the Holy Spirit can change anybody's heart. That's right. If the Holy Spirit can change Saul's heart, he can change my heart too. That's right. Amen. He can change my heart. He can change your neighbor's heart. Amen. He can change anyone's heart. That's right. Praise Amen. God. Okay, let's look at the rest of verse, the end of verse 19. It says, Saul spent several days with the believers in Damascus. Uh -huh. Right away, he began to preach in the synagogue. So the synagogue, that's like the meeting place, right? Mm -hmm. And he taught that Jesus is the Son of God. Completely opposite. Right, very complete. Wow, oh my goodness, completely off. Okay, many Jewish leaders, were they happy with this? No, they were not happy with him. So my question to you, Pop, is yes. what did they do next? Okay, ready for this? Yes, I'm question ready. Question number three. Saul learned about the plot to kill him. Wait, what? What? So they wanted it, they, they wanted to kill him. Okay. He heard about the plot to kill him. Uh -huh. A, he revealed that the whole thing was a setup and he really wasn't a follower of Jesus. B, he called into action the elite band of camels that he had secretly trained to defend him. Oh, wow. Teenage Mutant Ninja Camels, okay. <laughs> or C, his followers lowered him in a basket through the city wall under the cover of night. What happened? The answer is C. The answer is C. Okay, let's go. Verse 25, but his followers helped him escape by night. They lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. That's right. Oh, that's three. <laughs> All right, Pop, you get one more, right? That's right. I'm buying you lunch. Oh, right, praise okay. God. Stomach is waiting for the food. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So Saul headed back to where did he go? Jerusalem. Headed back to Jerusalem from where? From Damascus. That's right. So he's going back to Jerusalem now. And my question for you is this. How do you think the people received him? Because like, did the people know that there was a change that happened in him? They heard about the change, but they were really weren't too sure. Why, why do you think? Well, because they of all the things that they've heard about him, what right. happened to him and everything like that, what the, you know, what he was doing prior to. Yeah. You know, so they still, they're a little iffy yet. They didn't know what to No, believe. they did not know. So my question is, what did they do next? Okay, Pop, here we go. Last question, you get this right? I'm buying your lunch. Oh, praise God. Okay, when Saul tried to join the believers in Jerusalem, they A, received him warmly and were thankful for the amazing work God had done. B, 
They handed him back over to the leaders of Damascus to suffer the consequences. Mm. Or C, they were all afraid of him and didn't believe he was really a follower of Jesus. What's your answer? The answer is C. Final answer? Final answer. Are you sure? Yes, I am. 100% sure? 100% sure. A bajillion times sure? Oh, yes. You'll find it in the Word. I'll find it in the Word. Let's take a look. Verse 26, when Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the believers, but they were all afraid Good. of him. They didn't believe he was really one of Jesus' followers, but Barnabas took him to the apostles. He told them about Saul's journey, and he said that Saul had seen the Lord. He told how the Lord had spoken to Saul. Barnabas also said that Saul had preached without fear in Jesus' name in Damascus. Right. So Saul stayed with the believers. He moved about freely in Jerusalem. He spoke boldly in the Lord's name. Amen. Praise God. What do you think about Barnabas? Barnabas, he was a man of faith. He really, he took Saul at his word mm -hmm. and he believed what had happened to him. And he took, he more naturally, it's like, like a pastor. He'll take a young believer and take him under his arm. Yeah. You know, and begin to teach him and, and to train him. And I think that's what Barnabas did, did with, with Saul. He took him under his arm, under his wing more or less. And yeah. he, you know, and he began to train him. But he believed in Saul. He believed what happened to him, that he had a real, real bona fide experience. Yeah, I like that. Because for me, it's like Barnabas, because Barnabas spoke up for Saul. Right. That, right. that we see the change that happened in his life. Sure. You know, and now we're talking about a man named Saul. Now, you might know of someone named Paul. So here's the thing Saul is like his um, like a Hebrew name. And right. then Paul is like the Greek name. So later on in the Bible, you'll see a man named Paul. Same person, just different, you know, translation of his name. Right. Uh, but what's cool about this is that Paul or Saul, he mm -hmm. ended up starting churches and yes. writing letters to those churches. And we can Amen. actually see a bunch of those letters right here in our Bible um, because God used him God used him drastically because of that drastic change that happened in his life. You know, Ananias Amen. really had to trust God, yes, that he, he really heard from God, Amen. Um, and that, and really to face his fear too. Yes. Because that's a scary thing when it's someone right. you're afraid of, and you're like, I know God called me to this, I'm gonna listen to what, to what he said, and right. the courage of Barnabas. Barnabas had that courage and it right. ended up making a difference. Amen. And you know, Pop, I'm just thinking about the story. We don't have to face our fears on our own. Amen. Praise God. We don't. Because uh -huh. we have God. We have God's word. We also have each other. Amen. You know, like. You have me and I have you. That's right. Totally. We, we have each other. You know, and when we don't understand um, stand something, we can always talk to one another and ask questions. And that's what's important. Ask questions, listen, learn. Um, and you know, maybe there's someone in your life who's a little bit scary to you. And we're gonna pray for you today. Amen. Actually, will you pray for our friends at home? Sure. If there's something that scares them or if there's, um, like they, they need to face their fear. Amen. Will Amen. you go ahead and pray for them, Pop? Sure. Okay. Father. Lift up to you, everyone that's watching, Lord God, on this video, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for all of the children that are at home, and even the parents, Lord God, that are watching alongside with their children, Father, as they watch this. In your name, Jesus, we come against fear. We break its hold. We, Father, we just ask for strength to be given to each one of us, Lord God, to face the fears, to face the fears that are holding us back to, from doing what you want us to do, Lord God. And Father, we believe it and we receive it. In your name, Jesus, we go forth in the mighty name of your name. Amen and amen. Thank amen. you, Lord. Amen. Thanks, Pop. Amen. You know, friends, I encourage you to ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to even change your heart toward people or amen. even to the Holy Spirit to change other people's hearts toward each other. God can do big things because our God is bigger than everything. Amen. 
You know, we want to hear from you, right, Pop? That's right, we do. We do. So leave a comment on this video or email us at hvkids at highervisionchurch.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we want to see you in our Zoom circle Sunday afternoons. And we also have HV Kids Got Talent coming up. That's right. That's right. That is this weekend, so make sure you get that in. All right, Pop, I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. You know what, Pop? I love you 3,000. I love you 3,000. <laughs> All right, guys, remember, okay. every day with God is an adventure. So let's live God's adventures together. And now we're going to turn it over to who? The so-and-so show. That's right. You like them, huh? I do. <laughs> he does. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's a perfect shot. Just hold it right there. Whatever you're giving me. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. right, can I go get ready for the show now? No, no, just... no, no. I'm still setting up the shot. Okay. Ooh, this looks good. Yeah, looks awesome. I have been standing here for 30 minutes, John. You can't rush I'm art, get, Brandon. Oh, we're making art now? When have we ever not made art? <sighs> here we go. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I got an idea. Okay. Ready? How much longer? Just hold still. Not much longer. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. And then you're going to zoom out. You're going to zoom in. And then you're going to zoom out. And you're going to zoom in. Okay, I'm done. Then, I'm what? done. No. I'm done. Okay. Okay. That's fine. it. Fine. 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 So go take a break. Just can you bring your stand in? Please? Yeah. Thank you. All right. That's great. That's great. All right. Stay right there. Stay right there. That's why. Perfect. Not you. I'm talking to your stand in. Oh. You are allowed to leave, man. <sighs> Actors. <laughs> Glad we got rid of that guy, right? Oh, wait. That's perfect. Just hold it right there. Okay. And then we zoom in. Oh yeah, look at those eyes. Then we zoom out. Then we zoom in. Yes, we zoom out. And then we do a spin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is great. We go faster, faster, faster. Oh. Cut. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John Spiders. No. Horses. No. A nail, nails on a chalkboard. No, John. Look, John's trying to figure out what I'm afraid of. Nothing scares you. I, I can't think of anything. Sorry. What if your fingers suddenly turn into worms? Can't really picture that. Oh, here. I'll help. No, I think I'd actually find that pretty fascinating. Anyway, have we got a great show for you today. The power okay. going out. Uh, uh, huh? No. Uh. Storms! Oh, no, I love thunderstorms. <laughs> Can we do the show now? Sure. All right, so today. What about Oreos that have earwax filling? Oh. I find that disgusting, but it's not scary. Oh, well, we'll see about that. Because it's time for a game I call Fear the Filling. Fear the filling. Here's how this game works. Someone has replaced the normally delicious filling from these Oreo cookies with a filling that may or may not be delicious. All we have to do is taste the Oreo and guess the right flavor. First one to guess two correctly wins the game. Unless, of course, you fear the filling. I don't think so. Let's play. <laughs> That's great. Filling number one. Ooh, he's scared. No, I am terrified. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh it's gross. What is that? Oh. Yeah. It's sunscreen. Sunscreen? How do you know what sunscreen tastes like? I don't want my tongue to get sunburned. Okay. All right. Next filling. All right. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. Oh man, they're red. Mm. You scared? No. I want to run away screaming. Okay. <laughs> oh, hot, hot. Ah. Strawberry. Mm. Uh, mm. Oh. No. No, it's some kind of hot sauce. Hmm. Hmm. No. Okay, fine. All right. Can oh. I have some milk, please? I got it right. Oh, not that hot. You gonna be okay? 
always feel like. All right. Oh, it's green. Yeah. No. Nick, don't touch that. It's green. Do you know what that could be? That could be some sort of dangerous mold or grasshopper guts or some sort of radioactive toxin. Don't touch it. I'm not afraid. No, don't, don't. Yeah, you You should you, be afraid. You I'm, no, 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 no. Brandon, no. No, 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 Brandon. Mmm, mint. Mm. Guess I win. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. What's up, Kellen? You got a story for us today? Is this segment called Bible Discussion Time with Kellen? No, it is not. Then yes, I've got a story. Oh, actually, Kellen, can I help tell the Bible story today? I have a feeling I can make it more scary. I mean, I can make it more cinematic, which would be really terrifying, gratifying to our viewing audience. You know, I'm a budding filmmaker, right? I've heard something of the sort. It's true. I'm trending on Twitter. Listen to what people are saying. My son John wants to be a filmmaker. Looks like he won't be moving out of my basement anytime soon. Hashtag retired mom problems. Boom. You know what? Sure, you can help. But do you mind if I do a little setup though? No problem. Okay. Sometime after Jesus died and when he came back to life, there was a guy named Saul who was going from place to place finding people who believed in Jesus and throwing them in jail. But when Saul was on his way to Damascus to arrest even more Jesus followers, he had a miraculous encounter with Jesus himself. Today's story picks up three days after that encounter. Saul has gone without food and drink for three days, and he has completely lost his sight. John, take it away. <laughs> All right. And action. In a land called Damascus. Stop. What, uh, what's that? A wolf. No wolves in Damascus. It's just setting the tone. Sure, but, but there were no wolves. Fine. In no wolves in Damascus. All right. Easy fix. Action. In a land called Damascus, there lived an ordinary guy named Ananias. Did I say ordinary? Not so fast. God might have something to say about that. Ananias. Yes, Lord. Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. No! Scary, right? It's not too bad. All right. You asked for it. Lord, I've heard many reports about this Saul. He's come to Damascus to arrest your people, people like me. Surely you don't want me to go to him. Go! I'm just gonna cut in for a sec. That's true, God asked Ananias to go help out a man who should have been his enemy, so Ananias had every reason to be scared. Not sure if God's voice sounded like that, but I don't know for sure, so I'm gonna let that one slide. In any case, Ananias did what God told him to. John? Yep. <laughs> when God tells you to go, you go. with the fish because of the scales the scales oh, oh oh okay fine carry on would ananias let fear stop him from doing what god wanted him to do <sighs> brother Saul, the lord has sent me 
to you so you will be able to see. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Something like scales has fallen from your eyes. That's really great. Though, just in case you were wondering, Saul probably didn't have fish on his face. Just trying to be biblically accurate, Kellen. Yeah, so Ananias helped Saul see again. And I'm telling you, Saul was a completely different human being after that. He got up, he got baptized, and after he got his strength back, he started telling everyone he could that Jesus was the Son of God. Which goes to show you, when you go and... Wait, 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 Kellen, the story isn't over yet. You have more. Oh, yeah. This is the really scary, I, 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 mean, I mean, really emotionally moving part coming up. Oh boy. Saul used to terrify followers of Jesus. Now, it was his turn to be terrified. Saul, you're in danger. Some bad people are going to try and kill you. You have to leave the city. Now! Mystery. Intrigue, a midnight rescue through a hole in the city wall. Would Saul be safe at last? No. Come on! Shipwrecks, prison, unimaginable persecution. What are you, a mannequin? This man would face trials of these kinds and more for the rest of his life. Saul, who is also called Paul, coming soon. Or is it? Now you're scared, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, a little. Ha! If I follow Jesus, does that mean I'm gonna face trials like Saul for the rest of my life? Ha! I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. Bad stuff is going to happen, and there's gonna be plenty of stuff for us to be afraid of. But here's the good news. When you follow Jesus, you've got someone who's, who's gonna be there to help you face those fears. So sure, Saul went through some stuff, and we're gonna go through some stuff too. But it's not like you have to go through it alone. God will be with us. I feel better already. <laughs> Great. Thanks for your help today, John. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, let's do it again next week. I mean, that would be terrifying. Uh, I mean, I can't think of another word. Bye. Later, Kellen. Man, I thought my version of the Bible would totally scare you. Sorry, I wish I could help you. I, I just don't know what I'm afraid of. Oh. Well, hey, in that case, reveal the question! Oh, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of making new friends? Mm, yeah, or are you afraid of missing the bus and having to walk to school and then you can't decide if you should cut through old Farmer Ben's cornfield because that would be faster if his dog Dragon is asleep or if you should take the long walk along the road even though you'll definitely be late and you're paralyzed with indecision and you end up missing the entire day of school but you don't realize you've missed the entire day of school until the bus comes back to the very same spot that afternoon to let your friends out from school. Or maybe you're afraid of snakes. <laughs> yeah, talk about it with each other. What are you afraid of? And we'll see you next time on The So and So Show. I I'm always afraid I'll never get to say that at the end. Bye. So and So Show. What, you get to say it a lot. <laughs>